It is possible to turn a bank curve faster or slower than the design speed because friction is still there. It's just at the design speed we don't need it. But what is the maximum speed that I can actually navigate a banked corner? Well, this means I have to actually account for friction in my calculations. So again, maximum speed uh, at which I can turn this corner. So I still have the forces I used to have. I still have gravity pulling straight down and I still have the normal force exerting a force perpendicular to the surface and that force is still going to have components FNY, FGX, or FNX, sorry. Uh, but now if I'm navigating this curve faster than it was designed uh, to be, so I'm, I'm going faster than the design speed, I'm going to tend to drift up this incline because uh, the normal force right, is only supplying enough force at a low speed. At a higher speed, my acceleration is greater, which means I need more force pushing me in. And so that means friction is going to have to act down the incline, right? It can only act per parallel to the surface. So there's the frictional force, Fs, and that frictional force is going to have components, Fsx, and Fsy. So now I've got a whole mess of forces going on in here that are causing my centripetal acceleration. So I'm still going to apply Newton's second law, and we're still going to try to do this, um, but it's not going to work out quite as simple as it did before because I have this extra set of forces. So let's apply Newton's second law in the x direction. So the net force in x is Fnx plus Fsx. Those two forces together are helping me turn the corner. They are causing me to have centripetal acceleration. They're causing the centripetal force, right? So that's Newton's second law in the x direction. We're also going to have Newton's second law in the y direction. The net force in the y direction, and pay attention to which way is positive. I have up is positive, right? If I was drawing in my reference frame, it would look like this. Uh, I have Fny minus Fg, because Fg is down, minus FSY because it is also down because FSY and FSX have to add up to this vector that is down and right along the incline and that is equal to zero. We don't want to accelerate up or down this incline. We don't want to drift. We want to stay in a straight path around that circle. So now I have these two equations, net force in x, net force in y. And what I'm trying to do is figure out the maximum speed, v, that I can take this corner. And so my coefficient of friction is mu s. Then uh, fnx, I'm going to go ahead, this is the angle of, that's the bank angle, that's the bank angle, that's the bank angle. Those are my angles of incline. Uh, and so fnx, I'm going to replace with fn times the cosine, or sorry, fnx, the sine that's opposite of the angle. So fn sine theta plus, now fsx, let's think about that one for a minute. Is there anything I can do with that? Well, I can make it fs cosine theta. So plus fs cosine theta equals mv squared over r. Now I'm going to give you r, but I don't know fn, don't know fs, and don't know m. So that's three unknowns in that equation. Yikes. Well, is there anything we can do to simplify this if we look at fn? Because fs, remember, is really fn as well. So I could say fn sine theta plus fs becomes fn mu s times the cosine of theta equals mv squared over r. Well, that's a little bit better because now I have this in terms of fn instead of fs, so I've sort of eliminated an unknown, but uh, I think we can get it better than this because I don't know fn, and I would really like to eliminate fn and m from this mess. So let's see if we can relate fn and m. And I think we can if we come over to the y direction. Uh, Fny is Fn times the, uh, that's adjacent, cosine of theta minus Fg. Uh, Fg is Mg minus Fsy. Fsy would be Fn uh, mu s, uh, but we're in the y direction for uh, static friction, and so that's sine theta equals zero. So now I'm going to solve this for Fn, which means I need to collect my like term. So I'm going to rewrite this Fn cosine theta uh, minus Fn mu s sine theta 
equals mg. I added mg over to the other side. And so now I'm going to factor out this Fn, so the normal force times cosine theta minus mu s sine theta equals mg. And now I can divide both sides by that uh, difference right there. So I have Fn is equal to mg divided by the cosine of theta minus mu s sine theta. Okay, this whole thing has to get substituted in for Fn over here, which is easier to do if I factor this Fn out first. So I'm going to pull that out. I'm going to take Fn times sine theta plus mu s cosine theta equals mv squared over r. Now I only have to make this substitution in one place instead of two. So this becomes Fn is mg divided by cosine theta plus mu s sine theta. And then I still have the rest of this that is multiplied by sine theta plus mu s cosine theta. Oops, this is minus, sorry. So equals mv squared over r. M is on both sides, which is good, because that's an unknown. It's gone. We've eliminated Fn, and we've eliminated M, and we've simplified this equation. It, I know it doesn't look like it, but it is. It's simplified. We have G times sine theta plus mu s cosine theta divided by cosine theta minus mu s sine theta equals v squared over r. So if I multiply both sides by r, I get that. And I can square root that and that to get v is equal to the square root of g times r times the sine of theta plus mu s cosine theta divided by cosine theta minus mu s sine theta. Okay. So that's the maximum speed I can take this corner.